problem set, Fourier transform, Fourier series, and the spectrum. Welcome again, this is Dr. Ali Mugabel, and we have four problems to look at. Are you up to the challenge? So please share your answers, and let's see how many of them you're going to get right. Okay, let's start. The first question says, we have the following inverse Fourier transform problem. Compute the inverse Fourier transform of the following signal. We have x of f, we have sinc square, and we have the following expression. To make it a bit easier, I'm going to share with you the following options. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We have pi, we have the, delta, the increment function, the triangle function, 2 by t cosine 4 by t, and so on. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You can pause the video now, take your time, and try to find the answer. Okay, I assume that now you have selected the answer, and now to, now to look, time to look at the answer. Uh, I'm intentionally trying to do it in step-by-step -step mode so that you can follow up. So I, I'm scanning and getting a, an image of the free transform shifting property, which says if you multiply a signal by exponential, you get a frequency shift. I notice here when I look at this, there are two frequency shift, plus 20, minus 20, which is equivalent to multiplying by two exponential, which what we call the modulation property. Remember that multiplying by cosine, multiplying any signal by cosine in frequency will translate into um, shifting to the positive and negative frequency, just like we have here. But there is a scale factor of half. So you can tell what we are looking after, in fact, is we are having sinc squared, then we have f over 20, over 2, which is being multiplied by, I mean, the inverse Fourier transform of this, the time domain function of this, is being multiplied by 2 cosine, which I'm trying to illustrate here. So the function we are looking after is 2 cosine 2 by 20 t. 20 is the amount of shift coming from here. And we have a factor of 2 to account for the half. So now our job is to find the inverse Fourier transform of sinc square. Going back to the table, we can find that in the frequency we have sinc square here, which is given by the increment function. But to make these two functions match, what's important is what is inside uh, the sinc square coefficient, because whatever is outside, we can scale, we can account for that by scaling. So to make them the same, we need tau to be 1 over by, so 1 over by will cancel with the by. Now I'm going to reproduce this, this relation the free transformation, um, but with tau equal to 1 over by. So just substitute for tau equal to 1 over by, I got the following relation. Now, uh, still it's not exactly the same like what we want. We want to match with the intended function. So we need to scale both sides by 2 by. So if you multiply by 2 by both sides, this 2 by will cancel. And now we are ready to have a similar to the blue function. So at the end of the day, we're saying that the inverse Fourier transform sinc square over f, uh, f over 2 is given by 2 by uh, increment uh, or triangular function of by t. Now we're done. All I need to do is just to substitute back. And I got 2 cosine times 2 by delta. 2 times 2 will give you 4 by. Cosine 4t by t. So I'm, remember that I'm getting this from here. I just re replaced the blue signal. So I got the following. So this is our answer. Okay, looking at um, the sketch here, you can see that some of them are clearly wrong because the amount of shift here is up to 10, so this is clearly wrong. What remains is the first three answers, and then you are looking at the scaling factor, and the correct answer should be the second one. So if you get this two, then you are doing great. For the next question, it says, consider the periodic signal, x of t shown in the figure. Find the value of d0, which is the coefficient in the Fourier series given by the following expression. This is the expression for the Fourier series. We can do this by inspection, which is just the average value. The first d0 is the average value. Or if you want to do it, to do it formally, we start with the general definition of dn. We substitute for n equal to 0. So the exponent becomes, uh, entire exponent become 1. And then we integrate over one period. What's the period here? Uh, you can look at the period here. You can take any period. It's where the signal uh, start to repeat itself. So either from 0 to 6, or you can start from minus 1 up to 5. So the period in green is 6, 
t naught equal to 6 and then we can also execute the integration so remember that the function here I'm showing you with colors so the function here is either 2 between minus 1 and 1 and it's going to be minus 1 between 2 and 4 doing the integration will give you the area under the curve the area is clearly here 4 the area here is minus 2 so in total I will get 2 divided by 6 and that's equal to one third. So the correct answer is one third. We could have we could have done this by inspection, just by looking at the average value. Take one full period, let's say from here to here, uh, and then you just find the area under the curve. You divide by uh, the period, which is six. So we have four minus two, which is two divided by six, and you get one third. Now let's move to the third question. Let's move to the third question. Uh, Question number three says double side spectrum representation is shown for the following signal. I would like to uh, write the compact trigonometric Fourier series. Remember that every impulse here represent um, represent um, an exponential, or every two impulses represent a cosine. So uh, just looking at, at this, at the first at, at frequency equal to zero, we have two, but because there is a phase shift of 180, it's going to be minus. 2 it's going to be minus 2 and the second two exponents will be will be just one cosine with scale of uh, so we'll get 8 cosine 2 by this is n so we have we have to know the frequency the frequency is um, 1 over t naught so it's going to be 1 over 4 this is f naught okay or if you want um, omega is going omega naught is going to be multiplied by 2 by it's going by over 2 so cosine omega naught t or 2 by ft so this is going to be cosine times by this is by over 2 times t okay and then we have the phase the corresponding phase if you go down here is the one the corresponding phase is 270 plus 270 similarly for this is zero so this is nothing here for the last expression we'll get we'll get 2 times cosine the frequency is 3 over 2 times by times t because the scaling factor is 3 and the omega naught is by over 2 so then the angle is 90 degrees so this is plus 90 uh, just to make it a bit simple I'm giving some solutions and your job is just to select so selecting from these expressions Okay, you'll find that the, the correct answer I think should be this one number two moving to the last question again um, it says the power from the double side band spectrum from the double side sided spectrum okay it says the double sided spectrum for the signal is shown in the figure find the power of the signal first you need to know that the power does not depend on the phase so there is nothing that we take from here and going back to Parseval theorem or the power of uh, phase or power of exponent you'll find the power is just the sum of the square so it's this one square plus this one square plus this one square until you cover all of them so it shouldn't be a big problem um, you just square and sum square square and sum all of these components so you can also write this because we have the same exponent on the right and the left so it will be 1 squared here plus 2 times 1 squared times 2 squared which is going to give you 11 so the correct answer is 11 okay so please share with us how many of these questions you were able to to get correct thank you for being good listeners thank you very much we'll see you in coming challenges coming quizzes and questions and problem set. If you have any comment, suggestion, you're most welcome. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like the video and don't forget to subscribe.